If you're looking to add a little flair to your wedding films or commercial work, that extra 1% that just kind of takes it to the next level, then let's talk about the post zoom and two quick ways to do it. Nope, not like that. Like this. Sachin loves Tara unconditionally. They make a beautiful couple. When we became partners in dance, who knew we'd become partners in life? Now, speaking of taking things to the next level, if you're watching this close to the release date and are looking to take your wedding filmmaking to the next level, Wedding Film School is hosting a retreat in Boston for wedding filmmakers like you, and we want you to attend. Are you burnt out, feeling stuck? Introducing Clarity. A retreat for wedding filmmakers focused on creating actionable business and creative choices. Come to the Four Seasons, one Dalton, one of Boston's premier luxury properties, connect with other amazing filmmakers, refresh, recharge, and create actionable, creative, and marketing steps for your wedding filmmaking business. Join myself, Jay, Jared, and plenty of other awesome filmmakers from February 19th to the 22nd. Early bird pricing is $19.99 and includes activities, lodging, and food. Head over to www.clarity-retreat.com and sign up today. Now back to the tutorial and I'm going to be showing you how to do an effective post zoom in Final Cut. And I'm in my timeline, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I like this clip, but I want it to stand out a little more with a subtle zoom added in after the fact. So the first way we can accomplish this is a bit more traditional, slightly more time consuming, but in some scenarios it does allow you to be more detailed. And I'm talking about using keyframes, which you can use for various things. And it's this little diamond shaped thing. And in this scenario, we're going to be using the keyframe next to scale. Typically, you want to start at the first frame and end on the last frame. So I'm going to navigate to where I want the push in to start, hit the keyframe icon and leave that at 100%. Then I'll go over to the last frame of the clip or wherever I want it to end. I'm going to hit the keyframe again and adjust my scale to how far I want it to zoom. Now, it's important to make this subtle. And while it will depend on the length of the clip, I find myself usually increasing the scale by three to 5%. Now this process really isn't too complicated or time consuming, but there's an even more efficient way. And that is using a free plugin called Alex 4D Grow Shrink, which I'll link to in the description below. Now I'm not affiliated with this guy or company or whatever, but for most situations, I find this to be my preferred method of adding a post zoom. So with my clip back to its normal state and selected, I'm going to go to the effects tab and find the effect and double click. You'll see it defaults to a 5% zoom in, but I can adjust this to whatever I want. And quick note, if you want to pull out a little, you can just type in a negative number, but remember that you'll want to have your clip scaled in a little to start. Within this effect, you can also really dial in how you want the effect to look and feel, including setting a center point, which can be helpful in some situations. Now this video is aimed to be a tutorial, not so much a video on when to use a post zoom and perhaps more importantly, when not to. It can certainly be overdone, but when used cautiously and intentionally, it can amplify certain clips within your film. I hope you found this quick tutorial helpful. Let me know down below in the comments if you approach your post zooms a different way, and I'll see you in the next video.